This outbound Metro Southwest service train could be moving close to 80 miles per hour and getting commuters to their destination a lot faster. But it has to travel cautiously over four sets of intersecting freight rail tracks at the Forest Hill Junction on the city's southwest side. Forest Hill's century-old design was never meant for the 32 passenger and 90 freight trains that crisscross through here every day. And the Belt Junction, just a little farther east, is even more of a choke point. At the end of the day, between Forest Hill and Belt Junction, almost 70% delays on the Southwest service occur in these two locations right here. Metra, Amtrak, and five of the nation's biggest freight rail companies all share tracks throughout the Chicago region, and all are impacted by aging rail designs. So too are tens of thousands of motorists who have to wait every day for slow-moving trains at street-level crossings. But an infrastructure modernization initiative launched 15 years ago called the Chicago Region Environmental and Transportation Efficiency Program, or CREATE, is gradually speeding things up. Chicago is very important to us. Uh, we can do everything right, uh, you know, from the Pacific to the Atlantic, and if we, if we fumble in Chicago, uh, all is lost. CREATE is about to tackle its most ambitious project to date. In June, CREATE received a long-awaited $132 million federal grant for what's called the 75th Street Corridor Improvement Project. Together with funding from the city, Cook County, state, and the freight rail companies, nearly $500 million is committed for a redesign project to separate freight and passenger rail lines, as well as send some tracks over the vehicular traffic they often bring to a complete standstill. These projects are, are really kind of the centerpiece of all of CREATE. They're, they're the most congested uh, area in the freight network. It's, it's a real critical element to the entire uh, CREATE project. Among the locations getting a major makeover will be the Belt and Forest Hill Junctions. It's a huge bottleneck for the, for the industry, for Metra, and one of the first construction phases of this project, and it's funded, is to build this CSX main line over the top of these other four mainline tracks. That new flyover will extend all the way north to eliminate the street level rail crossing at 71st Street. Officials say the public-private funding mechanism for the latest projects represents a new and necessary approach to getting the much needed rail infrastructure improvements. Illinois officials say the federal government can no longer be counted on to supply the bulk of the money. But in the past, critics have said the railroad companies were not contributing their fair share. Tom Livingston with CSX, however, says the major freight haulers are now investing heavily. All the railroads are contributing uh, to create, and uh, it's really a formula-based uh, program. Some railroads are in the lead. So, so far, uh, we've given almost $70 million to the project. I can't uh, predict the future, but uh, we certainly look at it very closely. The CREATE program has transformed quite a bit of the Chicago area rail network over the last 15 years. Among the projects was this rapid installation of a railway bridge at 130th and Torrance that eliminated a street crossing of two Norfolk Southern freight tracks. In southwest suburban Bridgeview, the thousands of cars and trucks traveling 71st Street now flow under four rail tracks that once caused major headaches in the area. The improvement came just as nearby Toyota Park opened to even more traffic coming into Bridgeview. Most of all, we, the, we get, have much better relations with the trains, CSX and Dana Harbor, because we don't call them when they're blocking our, our access points. It was just a mess, so this has been a, a blessing to all of us. And in Chicago, the so-called Englewood flyover near 63rd and Wentworth eliminated another choke point for commuter and freight trains. If a train's going to be waiting for us or we're waiting for them, they're sitting there idling, they're burning fuel, they're creating emissions. So all that comes into play and also safety too. We want to make sure that our trains, anytime we could separate two trains from each other or separate grade from vehicular from trains, that's a really good thing because safety is our number one goal. But even with the new improvements underway, only half of CREATE's 70 proposed projects have been completed. Another $2 billion will be needed to finish off the program. 
the CREATE program from the beginning, 15 years ago, we've been taking a very kind of opportunistic uh, approach to getting projects ready and when opportunities come up. We never know when there will be a, a capital bill coming with the state legislature in Springfield or from the federal government in Washington. We want to be ready, and we have been. We've been quite successful over the years of always having something ready. When the remaining 35 CREATE projects are completed, Officials say the Chicago region will be capable of handling an additional 50,000 freight trains per year, perhaps starting in the year 2051. For Chicago Tonight, I'm Eddie Arusa.